Hey y'all, welcome to the Suburban Stitcher podcast. My name is Diane and today is January 10th, 2018. Happy New Year. Um, I recorded this entire episode about a week ago and it disappeared, went away and it's no longer with us. <laughs> so today you get, it's kind of fun, right? Yarn drying in the background. That is some January yarn club that will be going out um, tomorrow, provided that it's dry. It hasn't been in the sun today because it was rainy, rainy, yucky day. So um, it's taking a little bit longer to dry inside. Anyway, um, hope that y'all are well. I have a couple of announcements that I want to speak about. The first is Rainbow Along 2018 and we will be having it. It will be February. It starts February as the first date that you can finish a rainbow project. Um, it's as always, whips are allowed, totally allowed, um, and, and encouraged, in fact, because I am a whip girl. <laughs> I always have works in progress, so it's always good to um, get a few of them off the needles. So that is definitely um, coming up. The other thing is that it can be any yarn, any project, as long as it is rainbow inspired, rainbow in color, in theme, in name. And if you think it's a rainbow, then it's a rainbow. Um, I am not going to police every little bit of it. So if you think it's a rainbow, then it's a rainbow. Um, I also am going to change how we have done prizes in the past. I've normally done this big call out for prizes and donations and, and I am just not able to handle the amount of prizes and things that we kind of how we've done that in the past and the coordinating of all the donations and getting things to different people. So I'm going to curate some prizes and send them out to you. Um, if they are other makers, you know, things that I'm sending or things that I'm donating personally or something like that, then I will let y'all know. Um, so I hope that's okay. There will be prizes for participating because, because, um, and there's no minimum and it can be crochet or knit or weave or spin or whatever your fibery craft is. Um, or cross stitch. Heck, you got a rainbow cross stitch that you want to put in there? I say yes. Um, the second announcement is, and I can't remember if I've alluded to it or not. I think so. But we will be having a year-long knit, knit along called Get Suburban. And it is any project that you knit out of Suburban Stitcher yarn. And it's going to be hashtag Get Suburban 2018 is our hashtag on Instagram, on Ravelry. You can tag your projects as Get Suburban on Ravelry and on Instagram. Um, basically the rule is any project that uses Suburban Stitcher yarn, if it's, I, I put in the official rules 50%, but if you look at it and you see, oh yeah, that's Suburban Stitcher yarn, mostly, then it counts. Um, and then you can be eligible for prizes. The most fun, fantastic part of this knit along is that every single time I podcast, I am going to be featuring one of you. I'll be featuring one of your finished objects in this group, which I'm so excited about. So this, Cal runs continuously throughout the year. You're going to put um, in the finished objects objects thread one um, post every time you finish something. So the more things that you finish, the more times you can win. There will be pattern prizes awarded every time I do an episode and feature a project. And sometimes it might be that um, I just really was excited about a particular project and that's why I feature it. Um, it might be that I random number generated. Um, who knows? So um, I will not, I can't even say that it's going to be a consistent way. It's going to be whatever way I decide. <laughs> 
but the more times that you enter, certainly the more times you win because there will be random number drawings. And if you take cute pictures and have lovely finished object photos, then you're certain to draw my eye and draw attention to your project as well. Um, so I'm really excited about that. It's year long and it's just gonna be a great way to all um, become more acquainted with Suburban Stitcher yarn and for me to see all of the beautiful things that you're making. Um, and I also, just a quick announcement or comment, I wanted to say thank y'all so much for all of the sweet comments and thumbs up and likes on YouTube about Vlogmas. Um, it was fun, it was crazy, it was a lot, but I had such a blast and it, in many ways, it made me more purposeful about looking for all of the things that I was doing to enjoy the season. Um, it, there were several events that maybe we would have done, but maybe we wouldn't have, I, or maybe we wouldn't have, I don't know, but but we did and I videoed it and now I have a memory of it because I was taping it for Vlogmas and that's just really exciting and I enjoyed all of it. So um, thank you for your excitement and for your encouragement and yes. Um, okay, so finished objects. I'm gonna reach right here because I have a couple of things that I finished over the kind of before this episode, two pairs of socks and a cowl that I get all of which were gifted and I cannot show you, but I have Ravelry photos for them. I finished the Marion cowl out of some Western Sky Knits bulky yarn um, in a beautiful kind of muted pink color. And I finished two pairs of socks. Um, I can't remember which ones anymore, but I finished two pairs of socks and that cowl and they've been gifted and well received and they are with their new owners. I have also finished the Bray hat. And this was a new cast on for me this year in 2018. I cast it on um, January 1st. I usually try to cast on a new project on the first day of the year just to I don't know, tradition, <laughs> if for no other reason than that. Um, but it's just nice to sort of start the year with some new, um, some new project on my needles. Even though I have a million old projects, it's always nice to have one that's new. Um, but I knit this pattern, again, it's called the Bray Hat. It is by Jared Flood of Brooklyn tweed and it is knit out of Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. This was stash yarn. Um, I had purchased one skein of this yarn, um, this color, along with two other colors last February, right before I took a, um, a mitt, kind of color work mitt class from Susan B. Anderson. And the mitts that I made were, they were just practice and I wasn't, you know, necessarily in love with the, um, the motif that I had picked and wouldn't, you know, wasn't going to be something that I was like, yes, I need to go finish them. So I definitely wanted to save the yarn since it's Brooklyn Tweed, gorgeous yarn. Um, so I ripped those out and I've had it caked up since then. And I, knowing that I would probably want to make hats out of at least this dark charcoal colorway because it's just such a great color for anyone. Um, I had purchased another skein in the same colorway and this is the soot colorway of Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. Um, so I had two skeins of it. I used one full skein or what I had of a full skein and a little bit of the second. It's 56 grams total and the skeins are sold in 50 gram put-ups. So um, part of me thinks that maybe some of the original first skein got you know, chucked with the mitt. Maybe I couldn't salvage it out of the color work or something because I feel like I used more than six grams of the second skein. But either way, this gram is 50, or this gram, this hat is 56 grams. So a little more than one skein. And, and to be quite honest, I should have knit this longer, the brim. Um, I purposely knit it a little short, kind of hoping I could get it out of one skein and I just still could not. Um, I, I guess I could try to put it on. <laughs> I have a bun on the top of my head, but even so, do you see how it still pretty much fits? Um, again, a testament, gosh, cone head. 
um, a testament to my small head, I guess. Um, but I, I love how this turned out. I blocked it in um, fairly warm water. I won't say hot, but I would definitely say warmer than room temperature. I mean, it was it was warm water um, and it was quite dirty. Whether that is dye, whether it was just release from, you know, it's a rustic kind of a woolly or wool, you know, whatever the reason it, the water was quite dirty when I washed it. So just another reminder, and this was the first washing, let alone having been worn many times. So yet another reason um, that we all need to be washing our knits, whether they're brand new or whether they're 10 years old, we got, we have to wash our knits. Um, so that's the only finished object that I can show, but that's, I finished about four things since the last time I podcasted. Works in progress. I only have two that I'm going to show you. And um, really, it's the only two that I'm putting any sort of work in right now. Um, I did cast on, if you watched my Vlogmas and those of you who watch on iTunes, I do apologize. Vlogmas was only on YouTube and that's, there was just no way I was going to upload to both places every day. iTunes takes quite a bit of time. It is quite time intensive to, to shrink everything down to the right size and then I have to make a block. It's just so much more involved to get to iTunes for me. So, um, yes. So, <laughs> so anyway, I cast on, on Christmas Eve, I cast on the Little Bobbins Twas the Night Before Christmas socks. And the yarn that I'm using is a beautiful there's, um, skein of, I think I'm pulling everything out other than the thing that I need. Beautiful skein of a Lavender Loon Yarn Co that I opened up as part of my 12 days of Christmas calendar that I ordered from her. Um, this colorway is beautiful. It's kind of on this gray, light grayish gray, grayish gray, grayish gray um, background with these speckles of green and dark purple and a little bit of like a cherry red maybe. Um, or magenta. I don't know. Either way, purpley pinks and greens. And so I finished the first sock and it's quite nice. Again, this is the Twas the Night Before Christmas pattern from Little Bobbins. And I swapped in a Fish Lips Kiss Heel because that is my preferred heel for quick knitting and everything else is to pattern. And I am on the second sock. I have knit the cuff and all of the leg. I've knit the heel and I am on the toe. So um, this, between my work schedule and my not having a ton of knitting mojo right now, um, these are taking a little bit longer than perhaps they should. But um, every day I do at least do a few rounds on it. So it will get done soon and they will be finished and in the drawer ready for Christmas for next year. Because I think I will save these to wear at Christmas time. I think they're just beautiful Christmassy colors and lovely socks. Also, I think that Sam of Lavender Loon, who dyed this yarn, I think she might have this in her shop um, because several people had asked her about it after seeing it on my Instagram. So if you wanna see it, um, or if you wanna grab a skein of it, then go ahead over to her shop and I think you can grab it. Um, so that is one work in progress. The second work in progress, Kind of alternating between the two things. I'm really excited about this and you know what I should have brought should have brought the pattern over but I did not of course. 
Um, I am knitting a hat and I believe it's called Maline. Maline. Not really sure the pronunciation, but it is a hat from the Lane magazine number one. Um, I fell in love with it when I was knitting my Nuke cardigan and the pattern for this hat was on the opposite page as the Nuke cardigan and I, so I stared at it the entire time that I was knitting that sweater and I just would see it and just fall in love every single time I looked at the paper. And the, one of the most amazing things about this is it is a marled with three different yarns. Um, I pulled from stash, I pulled from scraps for this, and I really hope that I'm gonna have enough of one of them. <laughs> um, but I guess we'll find out, right? But anyway, it's a little scary now that I'm really, really looking at all of this. <laughs> but here is, and hopefully by now I will have, or right here, I'll be putting in a picture of what this hat, this hat looks like. But I have done about a little over two inches, maybe close to three, two and a half, I'd say, um, inches of the brim. It's supposed to have eight inches of brim. And you can see the three skeins that I'm holding together and how marled and lovely the fabric is. Um, the yarn that I'm using is two skeins. Again, these are from stash scraps leftovers from various projects. Um, two skeins of Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino Light. I know this colorway is Celadon and I can't remember what color this is, but it's a dark charcoal gray. And then I am marling in with those a skein of Shibui Silk Cloud because it is my, all things being equal, this is my preferred um, mohair, silk mohair lace weight. The reason is because it has the highest silk content. <laughs> this is a 60% kid mohair, 40% silk. Yes, so it has 40% silk, which is quite high compared to most other blends. A lot of other ones are 70-30 or 75-25, I believe. And this one has 40% silk. So it's extra shiny and extra silky um, and less mohair. Generally speaking, I think this is going to be okay. But anyway, so I'm loving it so far. Oh, this Shibui is the colorway is pool. So it's a gorgeous kind of deep teal color. Oh, who's calling me? Anyway, they hung up. So it's marling nicely. I love it. Um, what I did not mention with the ombre hat is I am purposely knitting a bunch of hats kind of early on this year, maybe some cowls and different things too. And I am going to start like a gift basket. Um, I don't know if these will go in there or not. I'm thinking they will because I have a couple of hats that I just really enjoy wearing right now and I don't need necessarily anymore. So, but I want to knit a lot of hats because I want to just knit them. So I'm using some of the things that I have and I'm gonna knit some gifts. I, I have a person that I think would really like this based on the color, um, colors. So I um, might just hold it for them and next time there's a birthday or an occasion of some sort, they might get this, but um, we'll see. So I'm just building a gift basket and hopefully my future self will thank me. <laughs> so this week for Hello Lovelies, I have a couple of things that are um, mostly not knitting related, um, but I wanted to point them out to you. Um, and I just got distracted because this little kid rode one of those motorized like scooter motorcycle things across my yard, like through my yard. 
not on the sidewalk. I have a sidewalk that runs through my yard. Ran it through the yard on the grass. I have a hard enough time keeping my grass alive anyway. Please don't ride on my grass. <laughs> okay, so the first thing is I got a set of Luca needles in the three and a half inch tip, like the hat sized, um, the shorter tip for hats and smaller circumference projects, mostly hats. Um, but I'm so excited about them. That is what I'm knitting. I knit my Bray hat on that. And to be quite honest, I would be totally lying if I said that that I didn't cast that on basically right away as soon as I got back home with my yarn because I wanted to use those needles. <laughs> I got those for Christmas from my parents, which was a lovely gift. And I am using them on this Maylene hat. So, so they are, um, I had spoken not so nice things about the sock sized needles for the Luca and I think, um, that I, I'm not eating my words because the sock size needles still are not my favorite, but these thicker um, <laughs> sizes, the bigger sizes are definitely fine and I enjoy them. So, um, so I got that and I'm just really enjoying having an arsenal of interchangeable hat sized um, needles in my, in my knitting tool set. Um, I also got, don't ride through my yard. <laughs> He's like going in circles. He didn't ride through my yard that time. Um, so I treated myself to a different calendar and I have heard about these calendars slash planners slash whatever you want to call them for many years. I've many people that I watch, um, online and on Instagram and just in real life, use them and love them. It was a little too loosey goosey for my taste, I thought. And the more I use this, the more I'm liking it. And what this is, is a Hobonichi Teco, I believe, which is the smaller size. It's an A6, almost positive, that's A6 sized um, planner. So you can see like here's my hand and it's about as tall as my hand. Um, he is just riding through the grass. This is so distracting to me. It's so disrespectful. Like I am the old crotchety lady that's going to be screaming at kids out of my door. He's a kid that my friends play with. I mean that my he's a friend that my kids play with. But he is annoying the snot out of me right now. Anyway, so I purchased <laughs> the planner and I'm, I'm really enjoying it right now. Like some days are just really plain as I was sort of getting used to it. And some are full of actual appointments and things. And then some I've gotten a little more fun. I taped in this little guy. I put, I was trying out a stamp that went through several days. Um, <laughs> I am practicing calligraphy, which I have no intentions of probably ever being any better than that. But yesterday I wrote literally dying because I didn't had nothing on the page for yesterday. And so I just decided to write what I did rather than what I was going to do. So yesterday I wrote literally dying all the Jody kits, all the January yarns. <laughs> so, so that's fun. Um, this cover that I got is a beautiful leather cover that I purchased on Etsy. It is so soft. It's the most gorgeous kind of camel, yellowy marigold camel color. Cause it's not quite brown, but not quite yellow. I don't know what this is, but it's beautiful. It's got this little slip for a pin, which I haven't used too much because I don't want it to stretch out, but I could put something in there. It has these pockets here for business cards. I just, it's so soft and nice. And it's 
the perfect little size, not too big. Um, as an aside, basically everything that I'm buying right now that's like purse, shoe, this accessory is like this light camel, light brown color. I'm completely, anything that's like mustard or camel or light tan, I am obsessed with right now. Why is that? Why do we have these phases? Whatever. So my face looks super flushed right now. Why? I just don't, I, want, I don't want ruddy skin anymore. I don't like it. Oh well, um, the last Hello Lovely, <laughs> back to business, is I treated myself to a Lamy, is that how you say it? Lamy calligraphy fountain pen. Rose gold, very pretty, um, and I love it. That's what I was practicing with for the writing in the planner, and I've just enjoyed using it in general. I got the medium tip, which is nice. Um, I used to buy everything super fine, like fine tipped or extra fine. And I enjoy that, like that is fine for some things, but for general writing, I really do prefer a medium, a little bit thicker, thicker of a um, tip on my pins. So, so that's nice. And I could, it does technically, the pen does fit in here, but it's, it makes it a little, like I said, it makes this like stick out a little bit too much. And I just don't want to stretch it out and wear it out. So, um, okay. Shop news for Suburban Stitcher. There are two big announcements. The first is I have updated the events page on SuburbanStitcher.com. And if you go there, I think I did a Instagram story a few days ago about it, but if you go to my webpage, you're gonna scroll all the way over to the right. And there is a um, tab that says events. It's like, or not a tab, but a little icon. It says events and you click on that. And you can see all of the events that I know for sure that I will be attending slash vending at or slash making an appearance at <laughs> in 2018. Um, the first is coming up in about a month and that is a trunk show at my local Houston area um, shop, my favorite one in our area, and that's Park Avenue Yarns in League City, Texas. I will be doing a trunk show of yarn only um, and it's going to be sock yarn and single ply merino. So those are the two that are going to be there. Um, but that trunk show will be on the 10th yarn only from 930 to 330. There will be some live, um, podcasting slash Instagram stories slash Facebook, YouTube stuff happening. So really excited to meet all of you. Um, and if you want to see a sneak peek of some of the things that are coming up this spring and you don't want to wait until DFW and you don't want to have to rush around and try to like squeeze your way in the booth, you know, <laughs> I'm saying that like, maybe it'll happen if I say it. Um, if you don't want to fight your way in the booth because everybody's going to go there first. Just kidding. Um, but if you do want a much more relaxed atmosphere to shop from and get some colorways, um, then this might be the perfect time to do it and to come out and see a beautiful store. Like I said, it's one of my, it's not one of, it's my favorite in the Houston area. It is the shop that I always tell no matter where you are in Houston, if you are looking for the place to visit. It is the yarn store to visit. And um, hopefully if you're ever here in the Houston area, then you can go out and um, make a visit there as well. So the other thing is, uh, what else? I put new yarn here on my notes. January yarn, but that's, those are pre-orders. So those, maybe that'll come back to DFW. Um, I do have a new colorway. Maybe that's what I meant to say. I do have a new colorway called Pixie Dust and it is super pale 
pinks and lavendery grays on a mostly pale background. These two are on glitter sock and it's so sparkly and beautiful. They would be amazing socks. Um, right now in the shop I have a lot of glitter sock. I have salted caramel is back. Yay. I have um, a lot of single ply sock. Lots of single ply and glitter sock in the shop so you need to go grab it. Um, I also have a couple of skeins of um, that are sorry silk. It's a kind of a hot pink color. It's not quite highlighter hot pink, but it's pretty hot pink. It's the bright pink that I used in one of my um, breathing space, not breathing space, starting point kits back last April or May. And yeah, so that's on sale. Those two skeins are on sale in my shop because they have been in there for a little while and they need to go bye-bye. So if you like hot pink, now's your chance. Um, yes, so so I think that's it for this week. Um, I hope that you all are having wonderful Januaries, wonderful 2018s, and I will see you next time. Bye guys.